Hello everyone, Creative Fun here, back again with another video, and uh, we are once again in the AJS-37 um, Vigan. So my new favorite aircraft, of course. So this is a continuation of my previous video where I discussed the possibility of using the Vigan as a modern strike fighter. And as I mentioned in the video, uh, one of the key aspects of a modern strike fighter is uh, able to uh, use precision guided weapon systems and uh, in the late 80s and early 90s upgrade of the Viggen uh, it received uh, capabilities of using the Maverick uh, known in Sweden as the RB75 and as you can see I have equipped uh, the Maverick missiles for this mission so uh, for this mission uh, it's very simple we have a convoy and in this convoy there are two targets that we need to destroy two trucks uh, we've been ordered to uh, avoid collateral damage where it's possible and to absolutely not target any other vehicles than the two trucks in this convoy uh, and uh, the only intelligence we have is we know a search area where the trucks are driving we don't know exactly their position and uh, we know that the trucks are driving in the middle of the convoy and is uh, flanked or like escorted by armored vehicles in the forward and aft area of the convoy so that's the intelligence we have, and it's our job to use uh, the Vigan's antiquated radar and uh, its, uh, well, not so antiquated precision guided missiles, and see if we can take out this, these trucks. Um, the goal is to do it in a standoff position, not to get close to the armored convoy if they have anti air defenses and so on. So we can do this in a safe manner with a minimum amount of uh, casualties all around. Uh, which is kind of like the hallmark of uh, a mission type of a uh, modern strike fighter. So we're inside the cockpit and I'm actually just going to do the startup procedure because it's so nice. It's, it, uh, the leather neck has really outdone himself with everything here. So let's just start this bird up here. I really enjoy this. Um, the sound of everything here is just amazing. So I'm just going to flick on those switches, turn on the generator, unhook uh, the throttle and then just tell the uh, aircraft to start up. While we're doing that, we're going to lower the canopy and we're going to insert the data cartridge. And I always like to turn on the cockpit lights, lighting here, because uh, I find it easier on the eyes, easier to read. And once we have turned on the cockpit lights, we're going to turn on the oxygen, because uh, being able to breathe is a good thing. And we're just going to arm the ejection seat in case of an unforeseen emergency. So all we have to do now is actually just to wait for the aircraft to spool up and it would technically be ready for taxi. So the automatic startup procedure for this aircraft is quite something else. Uh, it's even easier than the Mirage, which I, which I thought was easy. And if you compare with the F-16 or the A-10, uh, even the MiG-21, you know, this is this is actually quite easy. So the aircraft is started up in a, just a matter of seconds here. And uh, we're going to go to the ref Lola and we're actually going to load our data cartridge with the navigation information. And that's done very easily by switching to ref Lola, going into input and then just punching in 09 and 9099. And then just press execute. So we've got a little flashing digit here showing us it's loading data cartridge and it's loaded. Uh, the Vigan is capable of assigning uh, certain waypoints as target points. However, uh, since we are not quite sure where uh, where enemies is, uh, we're not going to assign a target point. We're just going to acquire the target on the radar and then we're going to use the radar to align ourselves and then launch our missiles. So we're ready for taxi now and uh, it's just a matter of getting going here. So the startup procedure and the, like the scramble capabilities of the wing is quite amazing. So we have a line of stuff up on the runway and we're just going to do a quick uh, pre-flight uh, pre-takeoff shake and uh, it's basically going to put the master mode into navigation. We are going to press the reference button to align uh, our heading with the runway. And well, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna punch the afterburner and then take off. And the Vigan is fairly stable when you're trying to take off, but if you need to do some co uh, corrections, please do them very, very gently. It's, the nose wheel is very sensitive. 
So we're reaching takeoff speed and we just pull back the throttle a little bit and the aircraft takes off very easily. I'm going to turn in the gears and I'm going to trim the nose up a bit to stabilize the aircraft. And we're up. Pretty nice takeoff. There we go. I'm going to stay in Afterman for a while longer because uh, we're going to do a turn here all immediately. and. Um, if we can lose the speed so quickly during turns that it's just more convenient to keep the afterburner on until we have completed our turn. So there we are. We're also going to turn on the radar. Okay, so we passed our um, navigation fixed waypoint and we have determined that our navigation system is fairly accurate now, no drift, which is a good thing. So we're now going to start uh, preparing for our engagement. The first thing I will do is just immediately select the RB-75 missile from the weapon selector panel. So that's ready. Second, I'm going to check my B-3 and B-4 waypoint, which is our search area. I'm going to zoom out a little bit on the radar here. So this is our B-3 waypoint and this would be our B-4 waypoint. So I'm going to align myself a little bit in the middle here. And I'm going to level off at around 1,600 meters. I'm going to activate my autopilot. This is a fairly good altitude to start scanning. And we're going to start zooming in here and see if we cannot detect them. At 60 kilometer resolution, uh, even though we, we, I think we can clearly see it's a black dot right there, we're going to zoom in a little bit. And yes, that is definitely our target. You can see it's a little bit black dot hidden there behind the, the ring there so we're just going to turn a little bit and see if we can align ourselves in the middle there and we're going to continue uh, towards this course uh, for a little bit uh, further we're going to need uh, we're going to be within maybe uh, 15 kilometers before we start uh, going uh, descending and attacking the target so I think we've got a pretty good fix on where our target location is so we're actually going to switch to attack mode and the radar turns off we're also going to switch off the autopilot and we're actually going to throttle back and uh, put this little pipper around this target area here. So let's see if we can pick off these two middle targets here. So let's see here. First target, trigger on safe, fire, reset. And then go for uh, the next, trigger on safe, fire. Two missiles off and then we're going to turn well outside their engagement range of those uh, armored vehicles that was escorting that convoy. And I'm actually going to turn on the autopilot here, and we're going to see if we can follow the missiles in. Uh, so we can see here both missiles going in. And uh, ooh, two direct hits, very accurate. And I do believe we got the, both trucks there, perfect. So that was um, what you would call a fairly well ex executed um, precision strike mission taking out two specific tar targets in a convoy. It's definitely something a modern strike fighter should be able to do. And uh, together with the Vigan's antiquated ground raider, I think we were able to do just that. So perhaps not as advanced as the F-35 or the, the A-10, but definitely uh, enough to fulfill the roles of a modern strike fighter, I think. So I'm just gonna head back and show you a, a quick montage of me trying to land uh, the aircraft. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the, the next video.